Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number 15 of the subject business law Today's topic of discussion is the Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008 Part 2. I am Dr. Rama Bansal working as assistant professor at Arya College Ludhiana and this project is sponsored by DTH Swayamprabha MHRD New Delhi. So today we are going to cover rest of the chapters of Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008 we have covered first six chapters in our previous lecture in which we have discussed various chapters like incorporation of uh, LLP and uh, the liability of the partners the nature and scope of LLP means first six chapters we have covered there now in this presentation i am going to cover the rest of the chapters that is chapter number 7 about the financial disclosures assignment and transfer of partnership rights chapter number 8 investigation chapter number 9 conversion into limited liability partnership chapter number 10 foreign limited liability partnerships chapter number 11 compromise arrangement or reconstruction of limited liability partnerships under chapter number 12 winding up and dissolution chapter number 13 and miscellaneous in chapter number 14 so let's discuss all these chapters in detail so uh, we are going to start from the chapter number 7 that is the financial disclosures so every llp every limited liability partnership has to maintain uh, and uh, uh, maintain the records of their financial statements so this chapter chapter number 7 is regarding financial disclosures under which the first point is the maintenance of books of accounts other records and audit etc so it is mandatory for every llp to maintain the proper books of accounts the books of accounts relating to the business affairs of the llp and these accounts are maintained for every year on cash basis or on accrual basis these are the two concepts of the uh, financial statements on which the uh, statements are being prepared either on cash basis or on the accrual basis and according to the double entry system of accounting and these records will be maintained by every llp at its registered office registered office is the office from where the llp operates so it is already being intimated uh, in uh, to the registrar where the registered office of the llp will be situated so every year when the accounts are maintained when the proper books of accounts of regarding the affairs of the company are maintained so these books are to be maintained at the registered office of the llp second is every llp shall within a period of 6 months from the end of each financial year will prepare a statement of account and solvency for that particular financial year for which the financial statements are being prepared and such statement of account and solvency will be signed by the designated partners of the limited liability partnership to make it a authorized statement next point is every llp shall file the statement the statement which we have discussed right now every statement of account and solvency will be filed by llp to uh, which is prepared according to subsection 2 with the registrar every year in such manner in such form which is required under the act of llp 2008 and this would also be accompanied by the fees which may be prescribed by the act next the accounts of llp shall be audited in accordance with such rules as may be prescribed that means 
after the preparation of the financial statements the uh, the accounts of every llp next is to be audited and this is to be audited in the manner which is being described in the limited liability partnership act 2008 and uh, in case of any default means if any llp is fail to comply with the provisions of this so every llp would be punishable with fine which would be minimum 25000 and which may be extended to rupees 5 lakh next point is regarding the annual return so every llp shall file an annual return duly authenticated which means it must be signed by the designated partners of llp so every llp shall file an annual return duly authenticated within the 60 days of closure of its financial year the financial year means for which the financial statements are being prepared so after the completion of that financial year every llp has to file an annual return within a 60 days of the closure of that financial year and this annual return will also be enclosed by the prescribed fee under the act Next is, if any LLP fails to comply with the provisions of this section, then in that case, LLP will be charged with a fine minimum 25,000, but it may also extend to rupees 5 lakh. And if the LLP contravenes the provisions apart from the fine, in case of default, the designated partner shall be punishable with fine, which is minimum uh, 10,000 rupees but can exceed 2 rupees 1 lakh. Next point under this chapter is inspection of documents kept by a registrar. So, the incorporation document, any uh, changes of the name of the partner or changes in the office, registered office of the LLP, if any changes are being made, then the statement of account and solvency and annual return which is being filed by the LLP with the registrar shall be available for inspection by any person, by any person which is to be sent by the registrar in such manner and it must also be um, and accompanied by the fees prescribed therein. Next is penalty for false statement. When the financial statements are made, it is always being believed that these are the true statements. The, the information mentioned in the uh, financial statement is considered by, uh, the, by the stakeholders the true because these are being signed by the designated partners which is the symbol of that these are authenticated statements. But in case of any false statement if it is made in the financial statements, so in that case any person who makes a statement which which is uh, the false statement and this is a false regarding any material particular and knowing it to be false means the person who is making the statement knows that this statement is false or which omits any material facts knowing to be material that means material here means which is important for the stakeholders to know about if that kind of information is falsely given or is being omitted knowingly in that case he shall save as otherwise expressly provided in the act would be punishable with an imprisonment which may extend to two years so that means it's very uh, important for every person while signing the statements financial statements that the every information provided in that statement must be true but in case if it is not true the person who signs it may get imprisonment for two year and shall also be liable to fine which may be extended to rupees 5 lakh rupees and it, it will never be less than rupees 1 lakh that means the fine of uh, 1 lakh to 5 lakh can be charged next point is power of registrar to obtain the obtain any information if because the financial statements are being filed with the registrar so if registrar feels that he needs any kind of information including any present or the former partner or or from any designated partner or from the employee of the llp to answer any kind of question so he can uh, give 
he can ask that particular person within a reasonable period. In case any person who is being asked by the registrar to get the information regarding the LLP does not answer within a reasonable time, then in that case, registrar has a capacity to send a summon to that person to appear before him. And if the person does not appear even after sending the summons to him, in that case, that person shall be punishable with fine from uh, 2000 rupees to 25,000 rupees. That means overall in this point, we can say that the registrar has the power to get any information from any person, whether he is a present uh, partner, former partner, designated partner or any, any employee of LLP and in case of default, that person would be held liable. Next point is compounding of offences. The central government may compound any offence under this act which is punishable with fine only. And this may be compounded by collecting from a person reasonably suspected of committed that particular offence. And in that case, the person would be chargeable with the fine only. Next is destruction of old records. So, uh, if the registrar feels that the, the particular documents which are in the physical form or in the electronic form can further be used for some wrongful purpose. The registrar may discard, registrar may destroy the documents filed with him. So, this is for the benefit of the LLP or, or, or to, to see in future if that particular documents are not necessary not required to keep with the registrar. That means it is upon the satisfaction of the registrar that the particular document is to be destroyed or not. Next point under this chapter is enforcement of duty to make returns etc. So, if any LLP is in default in complying with enforcing the duty of making returns then with any provisions of the act which requires the filing in any manner desired and on any request of the registrar to amend or complete the resubmission any document within the 14 days after the service on the LLP of a notice then the tribunal may make an order directing that LLP or its designated partners to its part to make good the default within such prescribed time which the registrar which the tribunal feels that this is a reasonable time and all the cost for this application should also be borne by the LLP. So this was chapter number 7 of Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008. Next we come to the chapter number 8. Uh, sorry, chapter number 7 we have discussed previously. Now the chapter number 8 regarding the assignment and transfer of partnership rights. So under this the first point is the partner's transferable interest. Normally uh, under the normal partnership act 1932 uh, the partner uh, can, can, can transfer uh, his interest with the consent of all the partners but here under this the rights of a partner to share or the share of the profits and losses of LLP and to receive distribution in are transferable either wholly or in the part but it does not by itself cause the disassociation of the partner or a dissolution and winding up of LLP this is just the transfer of the interest that means this is just a sharing of profit and losses just the sharing of profit and loss will not disassociate the partner from the LLP. Also, it does not by itself entitle the transferee to participate in the management or conduct of the activities of LLP. It's very important point to note here. Once the profits, once the, trans, once the, once the interest is being transferred by the partner to some third party that the transferee by this reason would not have any right to participate in the management or the operations of the activity operations or activities of the LLP. Next chapter number 9 regarding investigation. Investigation of the affairs of limited liability partnership. The central government shall appoint one or more competent persons as inspector to investigate the affairs of the LLP if 
the tribunal either suo moto or on application received from not less than one fifth of the total members that yes the investigation is required means if minimum one fifth of the total members of the partners or total members of the llp files to the registrar to the central government to the tribunal that there is a, a, there is an investigation needed in that llp then the central government may appoint one or more persons as inspector to investigate into the llp or any court by order declares that the affairs of llp ought to be investigated means except the tribunal the court may also give the orders to make an investigation in case of llp then the central government may appoint one or more competent persons as inspectors to investigate of the affairs of the llp the appointment of inspectors may be made if not less than one fifth of total members have filed an application if the limited liability partnerships makes an application that their own affairs are to be investigated means either the llp itself makes an application or minimum one fifth of total number of partners files an application third if in the opinion of central government there are circum uh, certain circumstances which may arise like that the business of llp is being conducted with an intent to defraud the creditors or partners or somebody else or it is running an unlawful business or the business is not being conducted in okay, in accordance with the provisions or apart from this if the central government thinks that they have sufficient reasons that the affairs of the limited liability partnership are to be investigated so in all these cases the central government can appoint one or more persons to investigate the affairs of a Uh, LLP application by partners for investigation. So under section forty three, uh, an application by partners of LLP under clause shall be supported by such evidence as the tribunal may require for the purpose of showing that the applicants have good reason. We said that uh, minimum one fifth of the partners should apply for the investigation. So in that case, uh, with this application, tribunal can ask to the applicants to show the sufficient proofs, sufficient evidences that yes, the investigation is required. What is the good reason to inquire? What is the good reason to investigate the affairs of a LLP? Next, firm body, corporate or association not to be appointed as inspector. means the tribunal can appoint only the individuals as an inspector no no not a firm no body corporate or any kind of association can be appointed as an inspector in uh, to investigate the issues of llp next is powers of investors to carry out investigation into affairs of related entities so if an inspector appointed to investigate and it thinks for the purpose of investigation to investigate also the affairs of the associated entities that means if at any time the inspector who is being appointed to investigate the affairs of llp thinks that it is also necessary to investigate the uh, to investigate the affairs of the associated entities of llp whether these are presently associated or these were past uh, pastly in past they were associated with the llp the inspector have that powers to investigate the affairs of that llps too that uh, associated companies too then the inspector shall not exercise his this power without getting the permission from the central government that means before exercising this power the inspector has to take the prior permission of the central government for doing this production of documents and evidence it shall be the duty of the designated partners partner and partners of the llp to preserve and to produce any kind of the books and the papers or any anything which is required by the inspector and which are at present in, in uh, into the custody of llp otherwise the to uh, otherwise to give to the inspector all assistance in connection with the investigation they are reasonably able to give
means in normal circumstances the partners of llp can can assist the inspector to make the investigation process facilitated next the inspector may with the pre, pre, uh, previous approval of central government require any entity to produce such books which are required for the investigation that means to get these papers to get these books the uh, inspector must have the approval from the central government in prior and after receiving all these books all these papers the inspector can keep these required documents into his custody for 30 days and after that 30 days the inspector has to return the same documents to the llp and if any person fails without reasonable cause or refuses to give any kind of paper any kind of books of the firm then to produce before an inspector any book or paper to furnish any information to appear before the inspector personally or to sign the notes of any examination then he shall be punishable with the fine which is minimum 2000 rupees but maximum can be 25000 rupees and further this fine um, further fine shall not be less than 50 rupees that means any person who is uh, who is not appearing in uh, appearing personally before the inspector who is required to do so or who is not signing the documents or who is not furnishing the required documents or who is not producing any kind of books or paper before an inspector that person would be uh, would be punishable with a fine seizure of documents by inspector where in course of investigation the inspector has reasonable ground to believe that the books and papers of llp may be destroyed mutilated altered falsified or secreted the inspector may, may may make an application to the judicial magistrate to seize those books to seize those papers means in any case if the inspector has the doubt that any kind of information can be concealed by any of the wrong acts so in that case he can uh, ask to the judicial magistrate for the seizure of such papers and the books and after considering the application if the magistrate feels that he may authorize the inspector to enter the place or places where the books are kept to search the place where the books can be kept and he may also approve the application of seizing of books and papers to of the llp to the inspector further the inspector shall keep his keep in his custody the books and papers seized for such period not later than the conclusion of the investigation that means once the investigation is concluded the inspector has to return all the papers and the books to the llp next is inspector's report the inspector may also if so directed by the central government shall make interim reports to that government and on conclusion of such investigation shall make a final report to the central government next is prosecution if from the report the central government feels that any person in relation to the llp is found to be the guilty of committing any kind of offence or the any person is found liable then in that case central government may prosecute such person for the offence next is application for winding up of limited liability partnership and in such case if any if, if the central government feels that they may uh, they, they may allow to wind up the functions of llp and on uh, it it can be done on the ground that if the central government feels the winding up of llp is justifiable and equitable then the the central government may give the orders for the winding up of limited liability partnership next proceedings for recovery of damages of or property if any person in that uh, particular proceedings by in, in that particular investigation is found guilty and this is being mentioned in the report by the investor uh, by the inspector then 
for the recovery of damages in respect of any fraud misfeasance or other or misconduct in connection with the promotion or formation or the management of the affairs such llp or for the recovery of any property which has been misapplied or wrongly retained the central government may itself bring proceedings for that particular purpose next expenses of investigation so all these expenses because the investigation is going on and all the further processes of winding up etc or if if all uh, in all this process some kind of expenses must be there and in that case any person who is convicted on a prosecution or who is ordered to pay damages by the central government would be required to pay such expenses and any entity in whose name proceedings are brought as aforesaid shall be liable to the extent of the amount or value of any sums or property recovered by it as a result of the proceedings and the amount of expenses in respect of which llp or any designated partner is liable would be reimbursing the central government as arrears of the land revenue next is inspectors report to be evidence and for all doing this the copy of the report given by the inspector or inspectors which was appointed by the central government shall be admissible as an legal document to any matter which is which is to be proceeded further so next is chapter number 10 that is conversion into limited liability partnership can any other firm be converted into limited liability partnership so this chapter gives the answer of this particular question so under this first one is conversion from firm into limited liability partnership if there is a firm that firm may be converted into limited liability partnership under the uh, second schedule of the limited liability partnership act 2008 next is conversion from private company into limited liability partnership yes even the private company can also be converted into the limited liability partnership according to the third schedule of limited liability partnership act 2008 conversion from unlisted company yes unlisted company can be converted under the fourth schedule of the act next registration and effect of conversion so for, since now we have learned any private company any firm or any unlisted public company can be converted into the limited liability partnership now what is the effect of that conversion the registrar on satisfying that a firm has complied with the provisions of the second schedule third schedule or fourth schedule whichever is applicable so in that case and the uh, the document submitted under uh, under these schedules the registrar can issue a certificate of registration in such form as the registration as the registrar may determine and upon such conversion the partners of the firm shareholders of the private company or the shareholders of the unlist uh, unlisted company shall be bound by the provisions of the second third or fourth whichever is applicable would be bound by those schedules and upon such conversion on and from the date of certificate of registration the effect of conversion shall be such as specified in the second schedule third schedule or in the fourth schedule and notwithstanding anything contained in the certificate of registration under second third or fourth schedule there shall be llp by the name specified in the certificate of registration registered under this act and all the tangible and intangible property vested in the firm or company whatever the case is now would be vested into the limited liability partnership without any further deed or without any further assurance any firm any unlisted company uh, or the any private company as the case was shall deemed to be dissolved from the date when it is converted into a limited liability partnership next chapter is chapter number 11 foreign limited liability partnership 
so the central government may make rules for the provisions in relation to establishment of place of business by foreign limited liability partnerships within india and carrying on the business will Uh, carrying on the llp's business therein by applying or incorporating any kind of modifications if are required to be made in companies act 1956 or any other act which is required to be amended next is chapter number 12 compromise arrangement or reconstruction of limited liability partnerships so under this the first point is compromise or arrangement of limited liability partnerships where a compromise or arrangement is proposed between llp and its creditors between llp and its partners then in that case the tribunal on the application given by llp orders a meeting of the creditors in case there is a compromise between llp and creditors and uh, uh, between llp and the partners in case there is a compromise between llp partnership firm and its partners then are it is uh, or or of the partners then held and conducted in such manner as it is prescribed in the tribunal's directs next if a majority representing 3/4 in the value of the creditors or partners agree for the compromise agree for the arrangements then the tribunal may give an order for that compromise or or for that arrangement and it would be binding on all the creditors or all the partner as the case is and next an order made by tribunal shall be filed by llp within the registrar within 30 days from the such order and if the llp fails to do that if 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 it does not file the same within 30 days then the every designated partner of llp shall be punishable with fine which may be extended to rupees 1 lakh next is if the tribunal may at any time after an application has been made under this for this arrangement then if it is uh, being the, the, it it can be disposed of if the tribunal thinks that such kind of arrangement such kind of compromise should not be there next point is power of tribunal to enforce compromise or arrangement but where the tribunal makes an order sanctioning a compromise in respect of llp it shall have power to supervise the carrying out of compromise it, it uh, the tribunal has the power to check the process of that compromise or that arrangement and it can also make the further modifications in the process of the compromise or the arrangement if the tribunal thinks that it is required and if the tribunal uh, say, if if the tribunal thinks that such kind of uh, compromise or such kind of arrangement would not work satisfactorily in future it may give an order for winding up of ll of that particular llp under section 64 of limited liability partnership act 2008 next point is regarding provisions for facilitating reconstruction or amalgamation of limited liability partnership so where an application is made to the tribunal for sanctioning of a compromise or arrangement and it is shown to the tribunal that compromise has been proposed for the purpose of reconstruction of llp or for a for the amalgamation of two or more llps and under the scheme whole or any part of the undertaking the property or liabilities of llp is transferred to another llp then the tribunal may sanction such kind of uh, arrangements or such kind of uh, compromises <coughs> so in this the tribunal may uh, allow for the transfer to the transferee llp whole part or the part of that property or the liabilities of the transferers then the continuation by or against the transferee limited liability partnership of any legal proceedings pending by or against any transferer llp the dissolution without winding up the provision to be made for any purpose any person who within such time and in such manner as the tribunal thinks that it would be good for the uh, uh, for the llp may do this next is 
where the tribunal thinks that uh, such incidental or consequential or the supplemental matters are necessary to secure the reconstruction or amalgamation shall be fully and effectively carried out the the tribunal may allow for such kind of compromises or for such kind of arrangements and within 30 days after uh, after this order every llp in relation to which the order is made shall cause a certified copy to the registrar and in case of any kind of default then the limited liability partnership would be chargeable with the fine every designated partner of llp shall be uh, shall be charged with the fine which may be extended to rupees 50000 next chapter chapter number 13 is regarding winding up and dissolution and the winding up of llp may be either voluntarily or by the tribunal a tribunal and with this order of the tribunal the llp may be dissolved may be uh, may be wound up and in that case the circumstances in which llp may be wound up needs to be discussed so among those the llp may be wound up by the tribunal one the first option is it can go for voluntary wound up so that is the one option as we have discussed there is one more option that is by the tribunal tribunal will give the orders for the wound up only in some specified cases so what are those cases the first one is if the llp decides that llp partnership be wound up by the tribunal means if the partners itself if the llp itself requires it uh, desires that the llp should be wound up by the tribunal then the tribunal may order for that if uh, during the period of uh, the six uh, past six months at any time the number of members in the partnership was less than 2 so it at that time llp can be wound up by the tribunal and if the llp is unable to pay its debt then the tribunal may order for the wound up of llp and if the llp has acted against the interest of the sovereignty and integrity of india then in that case to see the security purposes the tribunal may order for the wound up of llp and if the llp has made a default in filing with the registrar the statement of accounts and solvency which every llp has to file every year and if this statement is not being filed with the registrar for the five consecutive financial years in that case the tribunal may order for wound up of llp and if the tribunal is of opinion that it would be just and equitable to wound up any llp then in that case tribunal may order for the same next is rules for winding up and dissolution the central government may make rules and provisions regarding the uh, wound up of any kind of llp from time to time now we come to the last chapter of the act that where the miscellaneous items are being covered chapter number 14 so under chapter number 14 the first one is the business transactions of the partner with limited liability partnership so a, a partner of the llp may lend money or may do the transactions with the llp and and at the at that time he would have the same rights the same obligations of that person who has who would be giving the loan to the llp and he would be treated as a creditor of the company not the partner next application of the provisions of the companies act the central government by notification in the official gazette can direct the uh, direct, uh, can direct any provisions of companies act 1956 or companies act uh, 2013 specified in the notification that these provisions shall be applicable to the llp or shall apply to any llp with such exception notification and adaptation as may be specified by the central government and the copy of every that notification proposed to be issued shall be laid in the form of draft before each house of parliament for the final approval electronic filing of documents so any document required to be filed recorded or registered under this act 
may be filed, recorded or registered in any such manner which is being provided in the LLP Act 2008. So, it may also be prescribed uh, by the central government also. Next point is a copy of uh, that particular document which is being filed with the registrar or any extract of that document which is being electronically filed can be certified through affixing the digital signatures as per the provisions of Information Technology Act 2000 that and it would be considered as a true copy of an extract and in any proceedings it would be admissible as an evidence of the uh, of the uh, of the trueness of the statement and it would have the equal validity with the original documents next point is payment of additional fees if any kind of required document uh, which which is to be filed with the registrar is not being filed in the stipulated time period then in that case it may be filed with the registrar up to a period of 300 days on payment of the additional fees of 100 rupee for every day that means any document can be filed further in 300 days and for every day there would be a fine of rupees 100 uh, 100 rupees next is enhanced punishment in case a LLP or any partner or designated partner commits any offence, the LLP or any partner or designated partner for the second or subsequent offence will be punishable with the imprisonment. At first instance, they are being punished with the fine, but for the consequent for the subsequent offences, they may be fine. They may be punishable with the imprisonment. And as provided, but in case of offences for which fine is prescribed, either along with or exclusive of uh, imprisonment with fine, which shall be twice the amount of fine for such offences. Next is application of other laws not barred. That means the provision of act shall be in addition to and not in derogation of the provisions of any other law for the time being and force would be applicable. Next is jurisdiction of tribunal and appliant tribunal. So the tribunal shall exercise their powers and perform all those functions that are to be conferred by this act or by any other law which is being, uh, being enforced at that particular time. So, any person aggrieved by an order or decision of tribunal may further can file an appeal to the appellant tribunal under the provisions of section 10FQ, 10FZA, 10G, 10GD, 10GE and 10GF of Companies Act 1956, now at present it's Companies Act 2013. Penalty on non-compliance of any order passed by tribunal. So, if any order is being passed by the uh, tribunal for LLP, then LLP is required to maintain the provisions of that act. In case of default, LLP would be punishable with imprisonment which may extend to 6 months and shall also be liable to pay a fine which shall never be less than 50,000 rupees. Next is general penalties. Any person who is a guilty of an offence for which no punishment is expressly provided shall be liable to a fine which may extend to rupees 5 lakh but which shall not be less than 5000 rupees and with a further fine which may extend to 50 rupees for every day after the first day after which the default continues. Next is under the miscellaneous items, power of registrar to strike defunct limited liability partnership of register. So, when the registrar has some reasonable causes to believe that any LLP is not carrying out any business or the operations according to the provisions of the act, according to the uh, provisions of uh, uh, provisions of the act, then the name of that LLP would be struck off from the register of the LLP in the manner which is being prescribed in the Act of Limited Liability Partnership. Next point is offences to limited liability partnership. 
so where an offence under this act is being committed by the LLP and it is being proved that LLP has committed any kind of offence, then in that case to have been committed with the consent or convenience of a partner or partners or designated partners or designated partners of LLP or to be attributable to any neglect on part of any partner, then if any person is found guilty, that would be liable to be proceeded against and punished according to the provisions of the law or according to the uh, decision of the court or according to the decision of the tribunal. Next is jurisdiction of court. Notwithstanding any provision to the contrary in the act, or any other act which is in force in time being, then the judicial magistrate for the first class shall have jurisdiction to try any offence under this act and shall have power to impose the punishment in respect of that particular offence. Next is power to alter schedules. The central government by giving any kind of notification in their official gadget may alter any kind of provisions of the act or may alter any any schedules of the act they have also the power to make any kind of alteration which is notified under subsection 1 next is power to make rules the central government has the power to make rules for the uh, for carrying out the provisions of the act and they can uh, exercise their powers by giving the notification in the official gadget they can make such rules may provide which may provide for all or any of the following matters like form and manner of prior consent to be given by the designated partners form and manner of particulars of every individual agreeing to act as a designated partners of llp the conditions and requirement relating to the eligibility of the designating partners, manner of filing the document for the incorporation, the changes in the fees from time to time payable with every document or the required documents, the form of statements to be filed, the form of incorporation document may be altered, the manner of serving the documents of LLP to, uh, to the registrar, to the companies, to, uh, to the uh, tribunal, it may, it may change the manner of serving the documents also. Next, the form and manner of application, the amount of fee payable to the registrar may be altered from time to time. The tribunal has or the, the court has all these powers. The manner in which the names will be reserved by the registrar can be altered. The form and manner of notice of change of name, which we have discussed in our, prior, in our previous lecture, that the, 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 uh, they can also be changed. There is a process for that and that, can, that process can be altered if desired. The form of notice, the amount of fee payable, the manner of authentication of the statements can also be altered. The manner of accounting and disclosure of monetary value of contribution of a partner can also be altered. So, along with that, the books of accounts and the period of their maintenance can be altered like it is to be maintained every year. This period can be amended. The form of statement of accounts and solvency, there is a proper format to prepare the statement of account and solvency that can also be changed. The form, manner, fee and time of filing of statement of accountancy can be changed. This, the audit process, the accounting, uh, the audit of accounts of a limited, limited liability partnership process can be changed. This is now a required condition, but this can be made a voluntary, uh, this can be made on the voluntary basis, etc. The form and manner of annual return and fee payable can also be change so these changes are at the, at the discretion and can be made to the act at any time next is part to remove difficulties so the central government if finds that there are any difficulties uh, in the implementation of the provisions of the act or there are some inconsistencies with the provisions of the act and the central government founds it that these are to be removed so they may they have the, the central government has the power to remove those difficulties next every order made under this section shall be laid as soon as maybe after it is made before each house of parliament Next is transitional provisions. 
until the tribunal and the appellate tribunals are constituted under the companies act under the provisions of the companies act the provisions of this act that is limited liability partnership act 2008 shall have effect subject to the following modifications namely the for the word tribunal occurring in the clause b of subsection 1 Uh, of section 41 the clause a of subsection 1 of section 43 and section 44 the word company law board has been substituted for the word tribunal occurring in section 51 and in section 60 to 64 the words high court has been substituted for the words appellate tribunal occurring in sec- subsection 2 of section 72 the word high court has been substituted so all these alterations can be made according to chapter 14 so under this topic under today's discussion we have covered from chapter number 7 to chapter number 14 including financial disclosures assignment and transfer of partnership rights investigation conversion into limited liability partnership foreign limited liability partnerships compromise arrangement or reconstruction of limited liability partnerships winding up and dissolution of limited liability partnership and we have also studied we have also learned the various miscellaneous provisions which can be uh, regarding the provisions of the limited liability partnership act so this is all with this today's topic thank you very much